Hey everybody, welcome to the next episode of the Strand Tennis Center podcast, filled with tips, advice, tennis, not tennis, just life advice too, whatever you need. Uh, like it on YouTube, share it on uh, the podcast as well. Thank you. Welcome to the Strand Tennis Center podcast, everybody. Um, good to have a live show. It's been fun. We uh, what did we get? Two more followers, Santi. We get three more. <laughs> We're a juggernaut, Santi. That goes. That's one hundred and seven thousand and three. No, I'm just kidding. Um, this is Christian Rubens, who's uh, played Division three tennis. I always love talking to players, and he he's been here. Well, Christian, how long were you here for? I mean, when did you start here? Just you were in high school, right? Junior year of high school, yeah. And you f- you came in from Germany, right? Yeah. Did you? Let me think. Your father called, and you were just, you were at uh, school, at, where were you in, in uh, Connecticut, boarding school, right? Yeah, I went to Cheshire Academy. Okay. And I remember you coming down. I remember your brother used to play. Okay, so what was your big decision with college and school? Did you have an option to play Division One, or did you feel like it was too difficult? I was just curious about your thought process again with college. Well... So I was promised a roster spot at Bryant University. Oh, you were? I didn't know. Yeah, but um, I didn't really look into Division One schools at all. Uh, I just visited Bryant because they had, like, a business school separate. But they're, yeah, I mean, they're they're a good team. I, I don't know if I would have ever cracked the lineup, but. Okay. Uh, I mean, Tyler plays them now, so. It's he, Sacred Heart, Tyler, uh, yeah. Division One. Where did you, uh. What did you think of your college experience, though, going to Clark, tennis-wise? Did you enjoy, like, the tennis experience? I'm always curious about college experience. Um, I mean, I started off playing soccer because soccer is in, in, the, fall, uh, in, the, in the fall season. Yeah. And um, that was a good way to meet people. And that's my friend group that I have right now, too. But I ended up stop. I, I wasn't, that, like nearly as good in soccer as I was in tennis. Oh, super uh, talented, yeah. Not that I'm very good at tennis, just that I'm like... No, you're good. Good enough to play at a college level. And then I only played tennis, and... I mean, we had a really... We were really unlucky because we had one kid that got kicked out of school. We had one kid that transferred that were both number one players. One or two. So our team could have been really good, but... Because they left, um, we weren't as good. We were also in the new Mac, which has Babson, who's, which is like they're becoming like a top twenty team in D three. And I mean, top twenty teams in D three, they can all compete against Division one teams. Yeah, know? they're really good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they have Babson has a transfer. I don't want to give you false information, but I think he has, they have a transfer from Miami, which I mean, you Miami, yeah, is top D one also. Uh, and then we also have MIT in our conference. Okay. And, I mean, if you get the choice to go to MIT, it doesn't really matter how good you are at tennis, you're probably going to go there. And they have great tennis facilities, too. Um, but other than that, we have the U.S. Coast Guard, which is obviously very good, too. They're, like, right below those two. And then we have... Um, then it drops off a little with Wheaton, Emerson, and us. Um, so where is Clark? Is it north of Boston? It's... No, it's a little bit down. It's in Worcester. Worcester, that's so. in Worcester. Okay. Yeah. So, the, but the camaraderie of the team. Did you like the players you played with? How is that dynamic? Is it competitive, or you guys work together? You know, because it's an individual sport. I'm always curious about it. I mean, it was obviously very competitive, but what you also have to say, or what I have to note here, is that the one, two three players were significantly better than four, five, six. Okay. So it was like, it was the top three had more like a, you know, um, com- camaraderie, and then the bottom three also. We're car- we, I mean, we have a huge roster. We had like 14 people on, on a roster. Some of them are just really there to have fun. Um, the other team captain just cracked the lineup this year. He's a senior. He's a fifth year now, um, but he he did like a lot of other things for the team that you don't necessarily see in a Division One program. Um, he was incredible with stats. He did all the research on players that we yeah. were playing after. He's one of the like 
most valuable players without even being a player, really. He was really noteworthy, uh, really important key for our success. Well, that's, that's invaluable when you get someone that cares that much about tennis and the stats and is yeah. a numbers person, and he'll find patterns and things that yeah. you would never know. Yeah, it was, he's phenomenal. And um, th- that's where I see, I guess, a little bit of a difference because a Division One program would never carry a player that doesn't really, like, had no, not, didn't play that much or something like that, you know. Um, but Because you're not throwing around scholarships, so yeah, exactly. you can have a player that can provide intrinsic value, intangible value, yeah. and not worry about the money. You said it way better than I did. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. Um, did he play at all, though, or was he just a stat guy then? Um, f- I mean, because he was so valuable for my coach, he would put him in for some okay. exhibition, and also sometimes when we would play, like, uh, we, we played some teams that really just had, like, not very good players, okay. like Rhode Island College, um, those teams and he would play and he's a f- he's a great tennis player just a, a different level tennis okay. player you know like he makes no mistakes playing against he'll be any beginner because he makes no mistakes he yeah, yeah. but he's not like a freak athlete like our number <laughs> one or two yeah what was your UTR wise give people an idea like your number one was a what um our number one was at his peak, probably like a ten five. Ten five, okay. Um, in singles, he was not a very good doubles player because okay. he didn't have very good volleys. But actually, at the end, he found a, another player on the team that played exactly like he did. Like, didn't volley very well, but they had amazing ground strokes. They both stayed back and in they, doubles. They sometimes just played two back, and it it worked phenomenal. I have to say. Um, doubles has changed. Yeah, and then we have. Now, I mean, at that time, I was two, and I was around a 10 UTR. Yeah. A little bit higher in doubles, but that also dropped now because I haven't played, and then... Well, you're in graduate school now. You, yeah. Your career's over, my friend. Well, I do have one more year of eligibility because of COVID. Oh, okay. Um, so I'm actually making the decision right now whether I'm going to play or not. Okay. I didn't play in the, in the fall because... Um, I had a job, and we just had a coach that, like, our coach was just replaced, so it was okay for me to not, like, be fully involved with the team. But Speaking of coaching, I'm always curious about this. Respond, what kind of coaching do you respond well to? So you, your coach is gone. Did you have a good relationship with your coach? What's the best, what's the best kind of results are you going to produce with what kind of coach you think? So my coach is actually a former D3 player uh, for tennis, but he played professional volley- beach volleyball. So he, had a, he was a very, very competitive person. Like, he hated losing, but he also was very realistic when it came to, re- he was very realistic when it came to, like, we're not going to beat an MIT that has all 11 UTRs. Sure, sure. Um, with maybe a 7 UTR at the bottom. And there's no way... In, unless everything really just falls into place. But um, then again, to go back to the actual question, what coaching do I respond best to? I actually, I mean, I respond, I mean, you know, I yeah. respond fairly well to all kind of coaching. I think about it. Um, no, you're very coachable. I'm just trying to have you tell people that. I know how you respond, but it, you, to, you know, you. You're very coachable. You'll listen to a lot of people's opinions. You're, you know, very humble in your learning, which is great. It's very hard to find a good, talented player that is humble and will listen and will take information. Was your coach very technical? Uh, was he very, very... So how, how did he coach? Was, it, was the practice very specific or was it very general? Like, how was his coaching style? So his coaching style was actually very um, not technical at all. Even though I had some, you know, I have always had my problems with my forehand, and he tried to fix that too. But what his coaching, why it was so significant is because 
He studied the game of tennis, so the strategies you oh, have you to do it in okay. doubles. That's why I think we were a fairly decent doubles team because we practiced doubles. The difference also between D3 and D1 is every doubles uh, counts as one point. So we actually have nine points to win, where in D1 you only have seven because all the doubles count as one point. So it's really important, which helped us a lot, I think. Um, so that was probably... Why don't you explain, like, for the layman, when you go and play a match, tell them somebody that doesn't know anything about tennis, you're playing a D3 match, they go out there, what goes first, singles, double, what happens? So we start with doubles, um, so... It's one, two, and three doubles, and we have to wait until all doubles are, are done, unlike Tyler that I saw play at other places. Um, Tyler they, Lowe plays for Sacred Heart Division One school. Yeah, they, they play until two doubles finish on one. Like, if Sacred Heart wins one and two doubles, then three doubles just stops playing. Stops playing, okay. You know? Yeah. Um, so we all start doubles at the same time, obviously. Actually, no, let's start at the beginning. We get there an hour early. We warm up. We have our team warm up. Then we do... Um, with our doubles partner, and then we practice serves, and then we do some double points because we start with doubles, okay. so against our own team. And then there's no warm-up before a match. You just start. Yeah, so the opponent comes on the team, we spin the racket, and um, we start. With no warm-up, and then... So what is it? What is it what's the scoring? That's what I was going to yeah. just... The scoring is... Um, out of eight, so it's a pro set. Okay. For us. No ad. N- no ad scoring in Division Three now, especially in conference. Also, um, no ad scoring. Are there, they like, just are took there that lets away. too now? Are there no, no Division Three has no lets. No lets. Okay. Um, I mean, for serving. We're serving. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, but Division One does have lets. We we scrimmage totally cross also, which is a Division One school that. Again, Tyler also played. That's where I visited him. And we played their rules, and it threw me off completely. Because sure I've did. never, I've like, never played no lets. Yeah. Um, so that was... So you, you, all three matches, three doubles matches are over? Yes. And okay. then, so each counts as a point? Yeah. Okay. And then no warm-ups in singles either, you, unless there was a long enough break between your doubles finishing... And uh, your single starting, or um, the other thing is, if you didn't play, if you didn't play doubles, then you would Go ahead, get a warm up. Sorry, we're always so. If your match ended too long ago from doubles, you get a warm up, and you get another warm up if um, you didn't play doubles at all okay. and have to jump in for singles. Okay, which okay. also happen happens quite frequently in in. Uh, Division three because the bottom of the lineup starts. Um, I mean, for us, there's like they're between UTRs seven and and eight and a half. Okay. The bottom of the line, you know, they're all competing. What it, it's not eight game pro set though. Singles was is it? No singles is uh, it's two two out of three. Okay. And uh, again, no at scoring. So how many dual matches have you had? Like how many like how many matches can you play Division three? Why? What's the rule? So. It was how many? It used to be by days. Like you only could play a certain amount of there days. So people, people were doing duels and stuff, so they could get more matches in. That that is, uh, we would do like, um, so when we go, we went on a trip every year except for last year, meaning on a trip for spring break. Yeah. W- which we went. I have been to Florida twice, and to California once. Nice. Um, and again, it's by day how many days you're allowed to practice and. I think you're allowed to put two matches in one day, and it counts as one day. Correct. You know? That's what so. I was... Yeah, because I heard there was a lot of people that wanted to play more matches, so they were putting them into one day, because you yeah. only can play a certain amount of days. Yeah. And it's incredibly exhausting for me. Uh, hmm. I mean, for me, it was... We had, I think, six, six matches in seven days, or <laughs> something like that. Um, with, in between, we had one day rest. And this is very tactical, I don't want to interrupt you, but what is the meal allowance? Like, what do you get? So, we were actually very lucky that we had a a sponsor that sponsored this trip. He was the parent of one of my teammates, who uh, is a former alum 
Okay. Him and his mother. The father and the mother are are both alums from Clark, and they sponsored our trip every year, and we would get everything paid, hotels and everything, which is unusual for Division Three. Usually you have to uh, put some of your own money in. Um, we would, And we would get about $200 for spending money. That's nice. Well, I thought there was an NCAA rule with how much you could give... How much could the school itself give to you for an allowance? Is there any? I'm pretty sure it's like ten dollars a meal because yeah. of, a, after we go out for a match, okay. um, and we go to Chipotle, we can only get a burrito because so, otherwise. It so would... you can have a sponsor give you more. I, but I they, don't know what the exact yeah, I'm just D3 curious. rules are. We're just I'm getting really detail oriented because a lot of people like to know. They're curious about those kind of things. So I don't I don't really know. I know in Division One, you can just get free clothes and everything. Um, but in Division Three, technically you can't. But there is like a way, like practice shirts, for example. If they're not usable after or something, you can just uh, they don't ask for them back or okay. something. But I don't know the exact rule, and I, um, I don't wanna. So speaking of that, talking about business here, Santi. Division Three, you had a little side business going on stringing. How much did that help you during the years? Like, how much do you think? Money-wise, it made for you to be able to say, okay, I can be able to afford a meal and do this. Was it very helpful to be a stringer? Um, so it was. I started this freshman year because we had an entrepreneurship class and we needed to find a business. And uh, I also had to market it around Worcester and areas. And then I was very lucky that we didn't have a stringer at school. So everyone would string with me. That's cool. So I was stringing the girls, the guys, and a couple like uh, people outside. And, I mean, I think I bought my first stringer when I was um, 14. I mean, the only stringer I've had since then, and now I'm 24. And back then, my dad made me, made me do a business plan about <laughs> That's great. how many rackets I have to string a year to pay it off in, like, three years. And I think in college, I started stringing, like, sometimes it was... Like, seven rackets a week great which, uh, stringing pays very well um, at the end I, sh- I mean right now I'm probably stringing a racket I'll string a racket in like 18 minutes so the the time you put in we could use a couple well <laughs> I don't want to take Alex's job away. <laughs> Alex's job um, 17 minutes now? Uh, no 18, 18 Eight, between 18 and 22 depending on the, the frame what do uh, those dudes do at Wilson the US Open it's like 11 minutes or yeah. 12 it's insane Alex is also insane hey it's crazy fast yeah yeah. Um, I thought I was, but I mean, <laughs> there's always somebody better. Yeah, right? that's okay. Um, so that's so that's great. So it was really an invaluable thing, like having side hustles and well, this is goes all the way over this podcast, business wise, tennis wise. You get a little side hustle there, it really helps you, right? All of a sudden, you got a little cash in your hand at school, and, I, I mean, or or Venmo, whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. And then, I mean, tennis has just helped me so much in life, just from, like, being able to come here in the summers and work here and then also, obviously, string rackets. I mean, phenomenal job. You can play it all around the world. I mean, I go to Brazil to visit my family. This is where my family lives. And there's always someone you can play with. My dad, I still play with my dad. He's 58 now. Manfredo is good. He used to be a very, very good player. Um, Yeah, I mean... It's definitely a great sport to get into. My older brother, so field hockey is a, a men's sport all around the world, except for, not a men's sport, it's both gender sport, unlike yeah. here where it's very... Um, yeah, female sport. Female so. sport, yeah. and he, he plays field hockey, and like, if he wants to play, you need, yeah. I, I think, 22 men or something to just get a game going, where if you find one good player or one yeah. player that you like to play with, I mean, it's no, phenomenal. no tennis. You know, you know. I know you're getting your master's. Tennis can be a great side hustle job. Yeah. I mean, you can string, you can teach on the side. It it, it pays well. It's a great way to finance yourself or help yourself. You know, make ends meet with other things. But if you're starting a new job and you're like not making a ton of money, so you're like, let's do this. I'll work t- 10, 12 hours this week. We've even discussed that with you coming back here, maybe working some part time work because. Uh, you know, if you get a job locally. I mean, you got the invaluable player, great teacher, good person. You know, and that's what we were just talking about in the other podcast. You hire for the personality, and the tennis is almost secondary. And he happens to be a great tennis player, but 
you hire for the personality. He's got you got to be a good person. You have to have empathy. You have to have caring. You have to have humility. You can't go out there think you're the best person in the world and you're just gonna alienate everybody. So no, you're great at that. You're a great teacher. I appreciate it. And that's what I did over the summer. I like where I worked all day, and it's a great change up to come in and teach some lessons at night because you just sit on a chair all day for an office job, and then yeah, you actually walk around, which is why I think Alex was also. Yeah, he loves it. We have another person here, Alex, that works in, uh, well, <laughs> we, we can't mention Alex's other job, because that's the whole point. He, he does yeah. a different job that we won't talk about, but we don't want to. But he, uh, no, great stringer, great person. Um, what is the, uh, when is the master's degree over? I have one more semester, then I have a master's in science and finance. Look at you. And an MBA, uh, no, and a bachelor's in... Economics and management. He's just smarter than all of us, Santi. I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm just in front of a microphone, telling some jokes, acting like an idiot. This guy's the best. See, this is when we start, you know, ending the podcast <laughs> slowly. <laughs> this is right. no, no. no, but I, I just wanted a couple minutes with you. College life's important. Side hustle's important. Dedication. He's working. Um, thanks for the time. It's true. Oh, and while I'm live, uh, my yeah. tennis coach growing up just died. So oh, I'm sorry today. about that. Yeah. So. How old was your tennis coach? He was 58, I think, or just around What 60. happened? He, he was um, diagnosed with cancer in November, and, but he was fine. He was going to get surgery, and he just passed out of his aye, house aye, aye. today so, or yesterday. So. And this was in Germany, your first coach? Yeah, d- uh. like growing up. He was the one who taught me everything. Until I came here and you taught me the rest. <laughs> Hopefully I don't have the same fate. Thanks a lot. That's it. I'm done in a month. Aye, aye, aye. Well, thanks, everybody. Hopefully this helps. Share it. Thank you. Hey, everybody. Hope you liked the podcast. Please share it with your friends, anybody that you know, anybody that's into tennis, anybody that's into bettering themselves. Share it.